Kids, you hear the Frugal Crafter? We're gonna do another mixed media project today. So I've got my uh, Canson XL mixed media pad here from Oriental Trading Company. I'll put a link below if you wanna check that out. Remember, they uh, have a new art supply section and they price match any competitor's price and they'll actually beat it by 10% if you find um, a cheaper price elsewhere. I've got a little dollar store cutting mat that I'm gonna put underneath the page in my journal to keep it um, protected and we're gonna use stencils today. So what I've done is I've chose one letter uh, letter stencil and we're gonna use that in a bit because the ink I'm gonna use with this, um, I don't want it to run. So we're gonna do that a few minutes and then I've got my big folder of stencils and I just want to show you this because um, I have stencils from all different companies different sizes um, I save die cuts I've die cut some stencils you know so just to kind of keep that in mind this was like a leftover for some feathers that I did for a turkey uh, kids project so you know this is what my stencil folder looks like some of my stencils are really old some of them are new I mix and match them and when you take the old product and you mix it with a new it uh, really makes it look um, more modern and appropriate for your project. So what I want to do is kind of have like a color wheel look on the um, around the border of my page and I'm going to use some um, spray inks and these are my homemade spray inks that I made with um, uh, some, oh this is really cool because I used um, some liquid watercolor from Dick Blick um, so people ask me if they could use India ink. Um, I wouldn't because India ink dries and it can clog up your nozzle. So use a liquid watercolor for this or Easter egg dye or something that you know is going to dissolve food coloring. The reason I like liquid watercolor is that it stays. But anyway, I got these bottles from Paper Mart and I have a video on how I made this and these daubers. But just to wrap it up in a nutshell, these bottles came with the caps. You ordered the bottles and the sprayer separately and they came with the caps. So I took the caps, folded a makeup wedgie in half, hot glued the ends in and so I made all my daubers and you know, from the same order of bottles and caps and sprayers that came from Paper Mart and I also will have a link to that. I just love that um, to that as well and I think I'm actually gonna kind of layer some stencils and kind of make a cool border this way just kind of overlapping them. I love these wall stencils. Um, these are from you know what I don't even remember but I think it was like um, Plaid or Delta or something one of those companies. I'm just gonna kind of layer these stencils as I go and just I want to see what kind of um, pattern I get if I do that. I'm gonna go over here with like some yellow. I might have to move that over a little bit. Um, and I put the cutting board down so that if I get any overspray it's not going to damage, it's not gonna leak over onto my other pages. So let me see what that looks like. Oh I think that's fun and cool. What a fun background. Um, and now I think I'll use this one over here and maybe give a little orange so I kind of get that color wheel look because I'm using a quote and I don't know why I sound so hyper. I think it's because I just had like massive amounts of caffeine this morning and um, <laughs> because I had to uh, had to get up and get up early and get out the door quick and um, so <laughs> kind of hit my system at once. So I'm just gonna give it a little spritz. I want the concentrated color towards the outside and I want to repeat that you know first stencil here and the cool thing is with these paper stencils you know that you die cut something and like oh that's kind of cool I'll keep it for a you know one time use. A lot of times if you're using like paints and stuff it gets kind of thicker and stronger the more you use it so you end up with a uh, quite durable stencil. Okay so now I've got kind of this um, kind of cool look going on the outside and what I'm going to do is pause the video and dry this and then we're going to go do another stencil technique. All right I dried the background and then I've got my paper stencil here and let's just see if I can stencil the word rainbow um, <laughs> backwards here. I'm going to start with uh, usually I start in the middle of the word all right let's see R A R A I N B O W so R A I N N would be the center letter so I think I will start like that just so I can help myself uh, place this around. So I got N right there and that's green and I'm going to take my green sponge here and I'm just using my little um, Momento um, inks because uh, I just they're really easy to have all out on my table at one time. This is just an inexpensive paper stencil. I don't even know where I got it. Um, it was probably from a dollar store or in a kids art kit or something. Um, so, you know, use what you have. Okay, now I'll just finish up the word rainbow. I usually start in the middle whenever I'm doing something like that. I need my blue sponge. The only thing is my stencils get are covering over my ink pads. Okay, I'm not going to worry about it being perfect. 
And these little daubers work great. You can um, use a makeup applicator and clip it with a clothespin if you don't want to get your fingers dirty, or just fold it in half and use it as is. But I like keeping them from time to time because you get a nice saturation of ink in there. And then um, you don't you have to use up so much ink each time because that pad already has, it's like you have like little mini ink pads here. Kind of like the, um, you know, the, like the Tim Holtz um, blending tools, but you know, this is way cheaper. Um, and I did get a little over stamp there because I wasn't paying attention, but I'm not going to worry about that. And let's see, some purple. I've got dark purple here. And I don't, you know, you don't have to have a dauber for each color, just like kind of, you know, like I'd use this dauber with like a purple distress ink pad. I'd use it for this memento. I'd use it on a Stampin' Up pad. Any dye, I just keep dye based with dye based. And I pretty much prefer to use the dye based inks. That's just my personal preference. So. I don't really, I, I don't use these with the uh, pigment inks. They will work fine with pigment inks. I just, I just don't have very many and I don't tend to use them very much. And W is right to there. Look at that. Just fit. See, if I didn't, um, if I didn't start in the middle and kind of space it out like that, I'd probably run out of space. I tend to do that. Um, so this is just, it kind of helps me, especially working upside down, which isn't helping my cause. Um, so I want the, you know, obviously the quote that I'm using is, um, if you want the rainbow, you got to put up with the rain. Um, and that's a Dolly Parton quote. I just love her. She is so inspirational. If you're ever having a bad day, if you just Google Dolly Parton quotes, you will be uplifted very quickly. I mean, talk about a rags to riches story. I just love her. Okay. So I want to do I here and I'll do I in yellow. And you can wash these out like that really probably ought to have a little wash out. I think it's because like the, some of the ink pads, the little ink daubers rubbed up against the top of my box that I store them in. And so though you could really see on the yellow, it got a little dingy, but it didn't, it doesn't really transfer. So I'm kind of all right with it. Let's see. Now I need A and the A is going to be orange. I'll load that up before. Oh, look at that. I like the way my stencil looks. It's awfully pretty. Maybe I'll just give it a clear coat of like spray lacquer or something. Um, when I'm done, and then I can keep those pre-colors on there. Actually make it easier to see my stencil if I'm working on white. Okay, and then R. Gosh, I hope it spelled it right. <laughs> uh, you know, even on a, uh, even when I'm working right setup, the spelling is always a wild card with me. And it's not that I don't know how to spell. I'm not a great speller, but it's usually I'm being careless or something. I should have allowed more space. That O and the W were quite wide, but I'm sorry. We can always use some, do something else to balance it out. All right, so I got the word rainbow across the middle. Now I want to add some lettering and I'm going to do that with a, um, a black pen, but I really can't do that upside down. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to grab my, um, I think I'm going to go with a nice wide uh, micron. I'm going to use this, um, this black pen and I'm just going to, you know what, I'll just go ahead and write it in. Um, I'm just going to. If you do downward strokes, you tend to have a better, um, a better, it works a little better. Uh, uh, I'm just trying to do the same, uh, The same, you know, fonts. I know this is is this doll. This is probably very doll. I'm gonna hurry this up. Uh, <laughs> have to put up with the rain, and that's Dolly Parton. So I'm just gonna write that with a uh, little, with a smaller pen. Just credit it. Whenever I know the um, the origin of a quote, I like to put it on there. Now I want to go over with some more stencils because the stencils is the uh, the theme of this uh, mixed media fun lesson. Sorry about that dull bit. I can't talk and write at the same time. Um, so what I'm going to do is get some of my smaller scale stencils, and I'm going to use my daubers, and I'm kind of kind of do tone on tone over what I already have, and that's going to give me a border, and I can really closely direct um, where I want my color this way and I can create a nice little border around. So it's not obscuring what I have underneath there, but it's, um, it's giving me 
um, much more control over where I put where I put some additional color. So I'm just kind of I kept my pad my little daubers out with the uh, right in the lids of the little pads I was using. Now when you're using ink, I know some people uh, never clean their stencils. Um, when you're using like a dye-based ink or a spray, it's a good idea to just kind of spray um, spray them on an old towel and then just kind of wipe over them because this is going to be reactivated if some more water gets on it. And um, it might not, you know, it might ruin a project. Like if you had orange on there and then you're using purple next time, it could turn into brown. So, um, I, you know, if you're using acrylic paints, they're going to dry and become permanent on your stencil and you don't have to worry about that so much, you know, reinfecting your work. But if you're working with the dye based ink that, you know, if you spray over it again, it'll come loose and it will mix in with whatever you have. So just keep that in mind. I usually like if I like this has a uh, India ink on it. So I didn't clean it. I actually like how I can see my stencil better. But if that was dye based ink, I'd want to wipe it off. Otherwise I'd be smearing that black ink all over what I just what I just used. Um, I like to keep all my little stencils right here because I might take that whole envelope to like a crop with me and then I can uh, it's just easier to to handle it. Let's do some purple leopard print or giraffe print whatever this is some sort of animal print. I got this stencil a long time ago on clearance for like 50 cents at Walmart. So you know always keep your eyes open even if it's not like a craft store or something you think that you know would really have a crafty application. Stencils are one of those great supplies that are so versatile and useful and you can use time and time again. And you know, if somebody gives you a stack of stencils and you might think, well, that's not really my style. If it's a background, if it's a border, you probably will find a way to use it. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't turn them away. Um, let's see, I got a fairly clean baby wipe here. I'm going to clean that stencil so I can use it with a, another color that's not very similar to it. Um, let's set this piece of scrap paper down and just wipe it off. Generally, I wouldn't do that right on top of where I'm working, but I'm kind of running out of space here. They go, that looks kind of cool too, actually. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of that in green over here. My stencil uh, thing is, folder of stencils, the folder is kind of flapping over on my arm. Sorry if that's making a weird noise, and I'm sure my camera's making that weird jiggling noise. Still haven't figured out what that is. I think it's something inside the camera. Something must have wiggled its way loose at one point or another. And I can grab another pattern. I'll do some of this in some blue. Basically, you know, just keep working around to fill up that background. I think we're definitely going to get this done in uh, in the 20 minute time frame. So I thought about, you know, using some stamps too and kind of um, uh, doing all of that. But then I thought, no, I think I would like to keep these uh, lessons kind of um, to one or as near as I can to try to kind of show the versatility of each type of product that we use in, uh, in mixed media. I think that would just be a little bit... Um, a little bit more useful. I'm going to wipe this off so I can use yellow on it. You have to be careful that you don't bend your stencil, you don't get any uh, any little bits on the stencil that you don't that you don't want to lift up and tear the stencil I guess. Oh my gosh! I am not used to talking this morning. Um, and let me grab a little bit of this yellow here. And I think we're going to have a really, really colorful, fun project when we're done. All right, I really like that. So now I think I want to make the word rainbow stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to grab a, um, a fairly, uh, fairly heavy lined pen. This is number one micron, which it means it has a one millimeter line. And it's kind of like your bullet tip pen, I guess. So I'm just going to kind of add some lines just to define them a bit. And then I think I'll call it done. So that's going to show up pretty well. So there's just a fun, cheerful page for a rainy 
Saturday morning. I hope you enjoyed this project. Um, if you have any questions, please leave a comment and I'll get back to you. If you have any specific supplies you would like me to uh, cover on these mixed media fun um, uh, installments, then let me know that too. Please, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss any other ones. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.